Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here today on Zoom again, joined by Jonathan Kumuteo, who has just signed with Frank Warren and Queensbury Promotions. Jonathan, congratulations, because in a time where there's not much good news going on in and around the world, I can imagine this one has lifted the older lockdown spirits. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I'm so glad that you got my name right the first time. You know, in the amateurs, no one ever got my name right. So uh, thank you, Oscar. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why I got it right. I had a little look on um, back catalogue of IFL, if you'd ever been on before. Yeah. And you was on with Joshua yeah, yeah. outside Sims Gym in Brentwood. And mm-hmm. Sonny Donnelly done the interview. And he said, Jonathan Kamuteo. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I've got to keep that one, I've got to keep that one up there. But, um, there may be a few people who know sort of bits and parts of your story. Um, you've got a fair few followers mm-hmm. on Instagram. You know, they may have listened to a few interviews since you signed with Frank, but you sort of just take it right back to where it began, like perhaps where you first laced up the gloves and where your boxing journey started. Yep, so I started boxing at Finchley ABC in 2011. A friend of mine challenged me to spar him. At first, I wasn't really on it, if I'm honest, but he kept on asking me, and I always want to win. Whatever it is, I always wanted to win, so I thought, you know what? It can't be that bad. I'm going to go down. I fell in love with the sport. First day, first day, I literally, I felt like I was home. And it was crazy because I was never interested in boxing before that. So um, that was 2011, September. Finchley, um, ABC is a very patched gym. It's very competitive. So in my first year, no one really looked at me. You know, I didn't really get any sparring or anything at all. But in the summer, I went to um, train down at my gym in Finchley with um, at Derek Chisora's gym at the time. And then I came back to Finch ABC, obviously when the season had already finished. And then um, I sparred. And then my coach, Sean Murphy, paid attention after that day. And then I started getting a lot of pad time. Then I had my first fight, October 2012. Won that. Fast forward a few years later, I get hit with a, um, a skin disease called hydrotinnitus, HS, also known as acne inversa. And it wasn't that bad at first. I was out for six weeks. I was back in the gym ASAP. But then what it did was I got, a, I got an abscess on my right underarm. And it kept on growing in size every day until it became very painful. I couldn't put my arm down anymore. Got it removed. Minor operation. Was out six weeks. Came back. Boxed. But I had a tiny hole. Like, tiny. And then it just wouldn't go. And it wouldn't close up. And then... A year later, 2016, I won the London Under-20 Novice Championships. I boxed in the national semis. I lost to the winner who beat someone that I'd beaten before. And then my coach, Sean Murphy, told me, take a week or two out, then come back in the gym. Whilst I was resting, I just started to feel really weak, really weak. And I knew in the back of my mind what it was because whilst I was training for the championship, there was days when my underarm would swell up and it would go down. It would bleed, swell up, go down. I was, I was wearing dressings, huge dressings, like, like this big, for about two years and still boxing. So on the day of my fights, I'll just take them off because obviously you don't want to get caught by the doctor and he might say, oh, you're not allowed to box. And I was on sometimes up to 16 tablets a day. Strong antibiotics, um, which I had to take eight strong antibiotics that people, TB and HIV take for literally two years. That's how strong the antibiotics were. But I still boxed, still competed. But that second time, I felt ill with HS. It was tough. I was out for eight months straight, bed bound. So that was January 2017, had the operation. And then when I came back to the gym, my coach, uh, my doctor said to me, you know, you can't go straight to boxing, try to go to the, to the normal gym. I went down, tried to bench press. It wasn't happening. I couldn't even do 10 reps without the weights. And I'm not talking about the bar on its own, the assisted one. And that hurt, that hurt, because it was like, wow, in a short space of time, how can I just get to this? The first time I ever went to the gym, I, I lifted way more than that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it was tough. But, you know, I bounced back. I competed right through until the um, end of the 2018 season, where I lost in the London um, Championships final. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to focus on chasing up my dermatologist and sorting this thing out and I pay for my um healthcare so but my dermatologist just kept on saying oh we're gonna send you a letter we're gonna send you a letter chased them got an appointment she told me to see this surgeon she said she gave me three options in fact 
She said, if you want to box again, you don't really want to take any more medical drugs. And the three options were to take a shot in my stomach, um, a jab even every week for the rest of my life or however long it lasts for. The other option was to take something called Rakuten, which is like a, a very strong um, acne medication. And how it was going to help me supposedly was it was going to um, dry, dry my skin completely and how HSFC attacks your, your sweat glands and then it blocks them. And then the third, op the third option was to have surgery, a skin graft operation on all the affected areas. So as you know, I chose the, the third, the most difficult. And it was only a 50-50 operation. But my surgeon, you know, um, she gave me confidence. Barbara Jemmett and her team at the Royal Free Hospital who we were cracking jokes, talking about it. And that made me feel better because all my previous consultations were too serious. And I was like, damn, like, I can't keep bleeding. Every day I was bleeding, every day. I, I couldn't even wear a plain white T-shirt without wearing huge dressings anymore because I, just, I could just be out. I'll come home, take off my top, and I'm bleeding. And yeah, that's what happened. Had the operation, November 2018. Put it out on social media, and went viral. I still get messages still today. And it's HS Awareness um, Month in June. So um, yeah, literally thousands of people, athletes, you name it, they reached out. And I connected with a lot of people from that tragic um, circumstance. Been back in the gym since the beginning of 2019. Grafting, 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 training, sparring some of the top pros in the country, and we're here now. Was you a very wanted man? Because obviously, away from sort of the trials and tribulations that you've had, you know, it sounds like your amateur career has been pretty steady. You've been making finals, semi finals. There's sort of offers on the tables from different promotional companies. You know, you don't have to name any names, but was you a very sought after man? Yeah, I had options, man. I had options. I'm not going to lie. You know what I said to my friend a few months ago? You know, boxing is very political. I remember a few months ago, I was like, damn, I said to my friend, bro, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't ask anyone for advice because everyone is biased. I'm looking at my options. I've got this option, option A, option B, option C. I'm like, which one is the best one for me? Do you understand what I'm saying? And I said to my friend, I prayed for times like this. Now I'm here. It's like a blessing and a curse. I can't ask this person for advice because I'm going to say, no, come this way, come this way. Can't ask that person. So, you know, I took my time and I went with a decision that made the most sense for me. And that's with Frank Warren, BT, Queensbury Promotions. Why is that the decision that made most sense out of all the offers that were put on the table for yourself? Because in my opinion, I need to build. You know, I'm not in a rush. I'm still young, 24 years young. And the BT platform, huge platform, you know, the, the top two platforms are Sky and BT, right? So that's, that's already um, a blessing, you know, to be stable mates of the likes of two-time heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, you know, how can that not be the right decision? Being stable mates of guys like Tyson Fury, wow. Literally, like, we prayed for times like this and we're here now and it's time for me to, once COVID is out of the it's been sorted out or we can box behind closed doors. It's time for me to show everyone what I'm capable of because my doctors told me I was performing at 50%. That's no lie, 50%. And I was winning fights. And the fights that I lost, they were close. There's only two, three amateur fights that I had where I can clearly say, you know what, I lost. If I play the rest of the tapes, you would say, right, I won. I remember one time I boxed in, um, in Exeter and the guy literally landed six punches the whole fight. And I gave it to him. But it's amateur boxing. It never disowned me. And it is what it is. But in the pros, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. I've been preparing myself mentally and physically for a long time now. A long time. I want to touch a little bit on your Congolese heritage as well. Um, you know, you're in Scram Bar. You've got the British flag, the Congolese flag. Obviously, Ilunga mm -hmm. Makabu, Martin Bacoli and the guys that we'll be more familiar with. But, you know, obviously, in a standard white British community, football is viewed as sort of the main priority in terms of sport, you would say? How's boxing viewed in the Congolese community? I only started paying attention a few years ago, actually, because um, someone from Congo reached out and they said that they wanted me to go to the um, African um, Olympic trials, um, which was meant to be this year, actually. And I was like, oh, damn, 
I didn't really pay. I did. I honestly didn't really know Congo were really competing like that. Except in 2012, he had a heavyweight um, who boxed at the 2012 London Olympics, and he literally got a bye right through to the Olympics, and he lost in the first bout. And I remember his. They had to make a special head guard for him because his head was that big. Um, other than that, I didn't really know much about boxing in Congo, if I'm honest. You know, I came over here in 2003. I was born in Congo in a place called Lubumbashi, but there was a civil war at the time. It was called Zaire, and I was living in Zambia two years prior for two years prior to coming to London. And that story in itself is crazy because my mum literally woke me up in the middle of the night slash early morning. And she said, Jonathan, you're going to live with your father in London. And I said, well, I knew about London at the time was BBC News. <laughs> Honestly, that's all I knew because we had BBC News in Africa. And I, every time I saw it, I'm just like, oh, London. So that's what I was thinking. BBC News, BBC News. Put me on a plane on my own, age seven. Travelled over 7,000 miles. Been here since. So in regards to the boxing in Congo, I think I went off topic. We've got great boxers. Um, you know, Gina McCarby become the WBC cruiserweight heavyweight um cruiserweight champion of the world. That's big. That's big. That is big. Because I remember when he got knocked out by Belly, that hurt, you know, being Congolese. I'm a huge Belly fan, but that hurt the way he got knocked out. I was like, damn. My mum looked at me, she said, Ah, boxing, this is what you want to do. <laughs> I said, Mom, don't watch that. I'm good. You're friends with Andy Joshua, and that's something that you don't want to override sort of your name you don't want to be known as Anthony Joshua's friend you know what I mean but obviously we are interested in how you met Anthony so I can imagine it was through Finchley can you tell us a little bit about sort of your friendship yeah um I met him at the uh, at Finch ABC once um like I said I didn't really pay attention to boxing too tough so he was preparing I believe for the Olympics at the time and he came down to Finchley and then um we just bumped heads from there you know he was listening to a song that I listened to an artist that I listened to and then yeah, we just we just became friends more so outside of the gym than more than inside the gym. But then because he saw something in me that I wanted to really take boxing seriously, you know, he had me by his side and he I was blessed enough to have learned so much from being around a guy like AJ, honestly. Like you couldn't even put a monetary value on how much I've learned from being around guys like AJ. And his team, KD, David, I've learned so, so, so much. So much. You know, I've learned that boxing, especially pro boxing, is more than just a sport. There's a little clash now, isn't there? Because obviously, like you said, your stable mates with Tyson, obviously with Frank World and Greensbury Promotions, but uh, you're good friends with Anthony Joshua. So now I suppose if you're asked on the spot, Joshua Fury, I take it you're going to stick with your, your good friend, mm-hmm. Anthony? <laughs> uh, in my opinion, that's a very silly question. What's already understood doesn't need to be explained. If you understand where I'm coming from by that, right? 100%. Um, just before we wrap this up. What's your take? What, Age of Fury, of Fury. I'm asking you. Mate, I really cannot say what I think. In my position, I cannot say what I think because I've been <laughs> arguing. I've really got to keep quiet. So you're saying you can't, you can't say why you're arguing. But you're telling <laughs> you're funny, Oscar. You're funny. You know that. Mate, you know, you know. I've got to get these headlines out of people. But yeah, when you do finally step in the ring, just before I let you go, what can the fans expect? Are we going to see an explosive Jonathan Camuto? Are you sort of a back foot slick boxer. For those who don't know anything about your boxing style, what can we expect? Hmm. They're going to see an aggressive counter puncher, and the name's J.K. It's going to be just knockouts. That's what they should be expecting. I mean, that's good news because these days, you know, there's so many promotional companies, so many television slots, uh, so many fighters, sorry, for a certain amount of television slots. If you're an exciting fighter, that's what's going to get you the name. That's what's going to get you the brand deals. And that's what's going to get you the airtime. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I tried to tell that to a lot of people, but everyone has, everyone learns in different ways. And I had to learn the hard way. Trust me. Trust me. I had to learn the hard way. But, you know, I just can't wait. I cannot wait to get in that ring. But I'm sure, though, right now, you know, we're, we're going through um, uncertain times. We're dealing with the pandemic. You know, I've already been practicing patience. So this is literally just another time to apply, reapply that way of thinking. So I'm sure, but I'm staying ready. 
I'm in the gym all the time. I'm in the gym all the time. I'm always training. So I'll be ready when the when I get the call, you know, to box on BT Sport. You know, right now it's crazy because a lot of small show fighters, a lot of I think amateur boxing as well. Uh, it's looking like uh, it's not happening. But you know, I'm blessed and I'm grateful to have Frank Warren, Queensbury, and BT behind me, and I'll be able to show the world what I'm capable of. Jonathan, thanks for speaking to me. And we look forward to it because obviously when there's a new man on the scene and we know Frank's been sort of beefing up that domestic state, but when there's new fighters on the scene, there's always something for us to get excited about, you know, a journey to follow. And um, yeah, hopefully this is our first of many interviews, but next time in person without the dodgy connection at times. And uh, I look forward to meeting you. Me too, me too, Oscar. Thank I'm going to stay in touch. Shout out to you guys at iPhone. I've been watching you guys for years. This is the second time, I think third time I've been on, third time I've been on, but first time as a professional. And next time, it'll be even better. Loving the flesh, but still social distancing. <laughs>